from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering RSA Conference 2020 San Francisco. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media. Okay, welcome back everyone We're here at theCUBE coverage for RSA Conference in Moscone South floor, bringing you all the action. Day one of three days of CUBE coverage. You know, where the security game is changing, the big players are making big announcements, the market's changing from on-premise to cloud, then hybrid, multi-cloud, we're seeing that wave coming. Got a great guest here, Rishi Bararvka, VP of Product Strategy and co-founder of Demistu, which was acquired by Palo Alto Networks, where he's employed now. Rishi, um, thanks for coming on. Thank you, absolutely, happy to be here. So first of all, great journey for your company. Closed a year ago, half a yes. billion roughly, give or take. Yes, you guys did 560, well. Yes. 560, congratulations. Thank you. Big accomplishment. You guys were taken out right as your growth phase, and now at Palo Alto Networks, which you know, we've been following, as you know, very yeah. carefully. You got a new yeah. CM over there, uh, Gene English. Um, know her very well. We're very bullish on Palo Alto, even though that the on-premise transition's happening to cloud, you guys are well positioned. How's things going? Things are going fantastic. I mean, we are uh, investing a lot in the next-gen security business across the board. As uh, you mentioned, uh, Prisma Cloud uh, is a big business, and then on the other side, which is what I'm part of, the Cortex uh, umbrella family focused on the security operations center and the efficiencies, uh, that's fantastic. And uh, uh, a lot of product innovations, investment, and the customer pull from a SOC operations perspective as well. So, very excited. Uh, well, you guys had a big announcement on Monday, and then yesterday was the earnings, which really kind of points to the trend that we're seeing, which is the wave to the cloud, which you're well positioned for. Yeah. Obviously, this transition going on, but I want to get to the news first. Yes. Then we get into some of the macro industry questions. You guys announced uh, the XOR, which is redefining security yes. orchestration. Yes. What is this about? What's this news about? Tell us yeah, about so it. Yeah, so this news is about, uh, Demista was acquired about a year ago as uh, we uh, talked. Uh, this is taking that Demista platform and expanding it. And expanding it to include a very core piece which is threat intel management. Uh, if you look at a traditional SOC, what has happened is those SOC teams have had a SIM there and over the last few years acquired a SOAR platform such as a Demisto security orchestration automation and response platform. But the threat intel team has always been still separate. The threat intel feeds that came in were separate. With this, we are expanding the power of automation and applying that to the threat intelligence as well. And that's what is the threat intelligence current yeah. state of the art right now? So the current state of the art of the threat intelligence is uh, the larger organizations typically subscribe to a lot of paid feeds, open source feeds, and aggregate them. But the challenge is they aggregate them, they sit in a repository, and nobody knows what to do with them. So the operationalization of those feeds is completely missing. So basically they just go into a data pile, corpus, they That's sit exactly. there, no one touches exactly. it, and then everyone's yeah. like, oh, it's too, it's a heavy lift. It's a heavy lift and nobody, no CISO sees the value coming out of it. Yeah. How do you proactively hunt using those? How do you put them to protecting uh, proactively? Okay, so explain Cortex XOR. Yes. What is it? and what's the value? So the Cortex XOR as a platform, there are uh, four core pieces. Uh, three of which were the core tenants of Demisto uh, since the beginning. One is the automation and orchestration. So today, we roughly integrate with close to 400 different products, security and IT products, via the API, and let customers build these workflows. We come out of the box with close to 80 or 90 different workflows. The idea of these workflows is being able to connect to one product, pull the data, go to another, take an action. Yeah. So that automation orchestration builds a visual workflow. Second is case management, and this is very critical, right? I mean, if you look at the process side of security, we have never focused as an industry on the process and the human side of security. So how do you make sure every security alert and the process, the case management, escalation, SLAs are all managed? So that's the second core piece of Cortex XOR. Third, collaboration. Uh, one of the core tenants of Demisto was, we heard from customers that analysts do not talk to each other effectively, and when they do, nobody captures that knowledge. So Demisto has an inbuilt war room, which now Cortex XOR has the collaboration war room, and that is now available to be able to chat among analysts, but not only that, chat with Dbot and take actions. The fourth piece, which is the new expanded platform, is the threat intel management, 
to be able to now use the power of orchestration, automation, collaboration, all for threat intelligence feeds as well, not only the alerts. So, on the, so you're adding in the threat intelligence feeds. Yes. So is that visualized, is, it, is AI yeah, on that, absolutely. machine learning on that? Yes. So how is that being processed in real time, and how does that on demand work for that so, analyst? So the biggest piece is applying the automation and intelligence to automatically score that and being able to customize the scoring to customers' needs. Customize the confidence score per feed. And once you have the high fidelity indicators, automatically go block them. As an example, if you get a very high fidelity IOC from FBI that this particular domain is a malicious domain, you would want to block that in your firewall or your network security load immediately. Yeah. And that is not happening today. And that is the code. And that's there. because the, the, the constraint is I don't know the data. It's manual. Is. We don't know the data, and it's manual. Some human needs to review it, some human yeah. needs to go approve so it's it. Just not being surfaced. Just not being surfaced. All right, so let's get back into some of the human pieces. I love the collaboration piece. One of the things that I hear all the time in my CUBE interviews across all the hundreds of events we go to is the human component. You mentioned that. Yes. Yeah, at the end of the day, people are burnt out. I mean, like, like these security guys, I mean, I, the joke was CIOs have good days once in a while, CISOs don't have any good days. Yes. And you know, it's kind of a joke, it's pejorative to that, but that's the reality is that that's exactly people are the reality. overworked. Yes, we actually, okay, we, this is a huge we have issue. another joke, talking of jokes, we have this, which is what do you call an overworked security analyst? A security analyst, because every one of them is overworked. So, so this is a huge thing, so like the AI and some of the predictive analytics, the trend is towards personalization towards the analyst. Exactly. This is a trend that we're seeing. What's your view on this? What's your, what, how do you see no, that? No, so absolutely, we're seeing that trend, which is how do you make sure analyst gets to see the data they're supposed to see at the right time, right? So there's one aspect is, what do you bring up to the analyst, what is relevant, and do you bring it up at the right time to be able to use it, respond with it? So that comes in, one from an ML perspective in machine learning and our Cortex XDR suite of products actually does a fantastic job of bringing very rich data to the analyst at the right time. And then the second is can we help analysts respond to it? Can we take the repetitive work away from them with a playbook approach? Yes. And that's what uh, the Cortex platform brings to them. You know, I love to riff on some future scenarios, kind of, I won't say sci-fi, but you kind of roll a little bit in the future. To me, I think, security has to get to like a multiplayer gaming environment. Because imagine like a first person shooter game, you know, where, or a collaborative game where it's fun. Because once you start that collaboration, yes. then you're going to have some ROI around, I saw that already, don't waste your time. Or, Absolutely. And then you're going to get to know people, so sharing has been a big part. Yes. How soon do you think we're going to get to an environment where, you know, I won't say like gaming, but that notion of I got a headset on, I got some data, I know who you are, you got a reputation, so I think, uh, you got your armor, you got your, your, your certifications. Put, metaphorically putting, I think we, we, we have a lot of these aspects, and I think it's a very critical point you mentioned, right? So one of the things which we call the virtual war room in Codex XOR, I was pointing out the fact that you can have analysts sit in front of a collaboration war room, not only chat with your peers, but chat with a bot to go take care of this, is equivalent to, remember that Matrix movie plugging in says, yeah. do you know how to fly this helicopter? Yeah. Plug that in, now I do. That's exactly what it is. I think we need to point, move to a point where no matter what the security tool is, what your endpoint is, you should not have to learn every endpoint every time. The normalization of running those commands via the collaboration war room should be there. I, I would say we are starting to see in some of the customers who adopt XOR, they're using the collaboration war room to run those commands interactively. I would say though there's a big challenge, security vendors do not do a good job normalizing that data and that is where yeah. we are trying to get Well, Rishi, first of all, you get the award for bringing up a Matrix quote in the CUBE interview, so <laughs> props to that. So you got blue team and red team, pick the pill. I mean, pick are, the pill. Are, people, I are people picking their teams? You know, what's, the, what's going on? How do you see the whole red team, blue, blue team thing happening? I think there's you know? some uh, really good stuff happening uh, in my opinion, John. What's going on is, right now, uh, so far, if you see, if I go back three years, our uh, adversaries were automating. Then we started to see this trend of red teaming automation with breach automation and a bunch of companies starting to do that. With Codex XOR and similar products, we are starting to now automate the blue team side of things, which is how do you automatically respond, how do you protect yourself, how do you put the response framework back there. 
I think the next trend I'm starting to see is these things coming together into a unified platform where the blue team and the red team are part of the same umbrella. They are sharing the data, they are sharing the information, and the threat intel sharing. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I, I see we are on a, a very, very good path. Of course, the adversaries are not going to sit idle. Yeah, I mean, like you said about the DevOps and, and mindset and having this notion of knowledge coming your way and having sharing packages all baked out for you. Yeah. So you don't have to do the heavy lifting. Exactly. That's really the problem. The That's data really is the problem. problem. There's data too is much the problem and so much of it and you don't know what is good and what is not good. Rishi, great, great conversation. Again, <laughs> love the Matrix right. reference. Talk about your journey. You got, you've been an entrepreneur. Yes. And sold, you had a great exit. Uh, again, Palo Alto Next is a world-class blue chip company in the industry, public, um, going through a transition. What's it like uh, from an entrepreneur now to the big company? What's, it, what's, uh, uh, what's the your journey been has been like? amazing. Uh, I think our journey has been very quick one. We saw some crazy growth with uh, the Demisto. Uh, and even after the acquisition, it's been incredibly uh, fast paced. It's very interesting, a lot of uh, founders I talk to is like, hey, you must be now resting. It's like, nope. Uh, the journey is amazing. I yeah. think uh, we as Palo Alto Networks fundamentally believe that yeah. we need to innovate really, really fast to keep the adversaries out. And uh, that's been the journey. I mean, we have accelerated, in fact, some of our product plans that we had as a startup and delivering much faster. So the journey has been incredible and we have been uh, seeing that growth. Well, they Palo picked Alto. you guys right up. There's no vesting and resting going on when you guys were on the uphill on the upslope uh, growth, and certainly the relevance yes. for Palo Alto. So clearly, you know, you're having fun. People vest and rest when they're pretty much checked out, but you guys looking like you're doing good. So I got to ask you the question though, when you started, what was the original mission? Yes. And where is it now? How, I mean, this, is, was there any deviation? What's been the kind of the course Actually, correction? Actually, no, this is very, that's a very relevant question. Uh, it's very interesting. Um, right after the acquisition, we went and looked at our pitch deck, which we presented to VCs uh, in mid-2015. Uh, Believe it or not, the mission has not changed. Not changed in IOTA. It had the same components of how do you make the life of a security person, a security analyst easy. And it's on the same mission, by automating more, by applying AI and learning to help them further, by letting them collaborate. So all the aspects of case management, process, collaboration, automation, orchestration, it's not changed. And that's actually, very powerful because if you're on the same mission, of course you're adding more and more capabilities, yeah. but we are still on the same path and yeah. growing on that path. So every company's got their own little nuance, Moore's Law for Intel. What made you guys successful? Was it the culture of DevOps? It sounds like you guys had a certain cut ethos yeah. that was cut in grain. I, the mission, I think the mission's I would great, say, by the way, making yeah. things easy, yeah. but you got to do it. You yes. got to stay the course. Yes. What was the I think what I was say that fundamental cultural feature? Yeah, there's one thing, we really stand by, and I actually tweeted about a few weeks ago this, which is every idea is as good as, as, good as its execution. So there's two things which we really focused on, which is customer focus. And we were really, really particular about customer focus. Customer needs to get the product, needs to use the product. Customer focus and execution. As we heard the customers loud and clear, every small bit of it. And that's what made the uh, And also, did, did you fun. guys have this agile mindset as well? Oh, absolutely. The, the I mean, the agile, agile mindset and the DevOps mindset comes with the customer focus because we kind of did these micro pivots. Customer wants this, like why do they want this? What is the end goal? Pivot it, learn it, move on to it. Make a decision, Make align. A decision, align that's and the go. Amazon Web Services way. Yes. Ar debate, argue, align, go. And then go. And then once you said go, you run. Rishi, great success story. Again, just start up right out of the gate. 2015, acquired a couple years later. Congratulations to you and your team. And Thank you. Looking forward to seeing your next Palo Alto Networks event or yeah, uh, the Cube absolutely. interview. Thanks for coming on. Great insight. Right. We're here in the Cube coverage. I'm John Furrier here on the ground floor of RSA Conference on Moscone. Getting all the signal, extracting it from the noise here on the Cube. Thanks for watching.